So in the last episode, we got to a place where we're making requests for every one of the users that we follow. Today, what we're going to do is look at how we actually update our model with that information, and then even look at how we list them in the UI. So in the last episode, we added to our update function the fetch followed user message, but we're not doing anything with it. In this episode, what we're going to do is actually update this with the user data. So what we need to do here, if we're logged in, is go through our list of followed users, find the one with the matching ID, and update the data in there. Because we only want to do this if we're logged in. So we can say case model.auth of, and if it's a logged in user, so we'll say logged in. And if we're logged in, remember we have a token, which we don't actually care about here, so I'm going to put an underscore, and I'll say a logged in user. Then we want to do our work, but for now I'll just put command model.none there. And if it's anything else other than logged in, we don't need to worry about it. So we do need to return command model.none for that one. So if they are logged in, we're going to say let new following. And this is going to equal list.map. Uh, and we're going to take a, a followed user here. If you're thinking that this might get a bit clunky over lots of lines, you'd be right. We'll probably end up pulling this out into a function. And for now, let's just make this list of map return uh, followed user. So it's just returning itself. And then we'll pass that logged in user dot following. And if we do that, we can then say in. And now we need to update the new logged in user and then end up updating our model with our new authentication status. So we then say let new uh, status, uh, sorry, let's say new user. And this is the logged in user with the following list updated to be the new following. It yeah, are definitely going to pull some functions out to tie this up. And we can then say new status equals logged in uh, with the token. So we actually are going to need to keep the token around and the new user. So let's go back up, find the underscore and replace it with token. So we need the token just so we can use it to construct our new status. And finally, if we've done all that, we can then say model where the uh, auth is the new status and we don't have any commands to do. So that feels like a lot of work. What we're going to do is pull out functions to help us update the user. But for now, we're going to get this functionality working first. And just to help us check it's working, I'm going to say new status will be debug.log, new status, and we'll pass it that. That way we can just see what's happening. So if we go to the browser now, you'll see that it's working. Our new status is logged, but we've got followed user with the user ID and then nothing for the actual data. So that's the bit we need to update. So we're going to do that in our list.map. So we're going to say case followed user of, so they're going to be a followed user. We're going to have a user ID, which we're going to compare it with. And you might think we need to match on nothing here, but actually I'm not going to care if we have any data or not. If we don't have it, we'll save some new data. If we do have it, we'll replace it with the data we just fetched from the API. And actually this is going to, as it stands, match every single user. So let's just destructure this out in here. So we'll say followed user, user ID. Uh, and then we're not going to care about their current status, uh, but we will assign it to a variable. So we'll say user ID and let's call that user data. Now we only want to do something in this map if our user ID matches the idea of the user we just fetched. So just for clarity, I'm going to change this user here to be followed user. So I want to write a function that says if, uh, let's say user IDs equal, and it should be able to say the user ID and the followed user dot ID. Then we need to do something, uh, except for now we're just going to uh, return the existing user, user ID, user data. Else, at this point, if they don't match, then we don't need to do anything and we'll just return it as is. So let's write a function that lets us know if user IDs are equal or not. I'm just going to do it in the main for now, but we'll move this out in a bit. So we'll say user IDs equal. It's going to take one user ID and another user ID and return a Boolean. User ID is equal. What we're going to do is we're going to destructure and just compare the strings. So we'll say user ID A and user ID B. And these are going to be equal if A is equal equal to B. So if they are equal, we're going to return the followed user with their user ID. But then rather than user data, we can just swap this for followed user. And you can see that's erroring there. And of course, that's because the followed user data, if we have it, is wrapped in a maybe. So that's going to be just followed user else we're going to leave it alone. And in fact, to make it clearer we're leaving it alone, we can use the as trick again. So we can say followed user, user ID, user data, uh, as, uh, let's call this existing followed user. 
And now we can say else existing followed user. Although it's a bit more wordy, I think it's a bit clearer that we're actually not updating anything here. Let's go and see what's going on in the browser. Although it's a little unclear, the DevTools makes it a bit squished up, we can actually see that this is working correctly. So our following list is a followed user that has the user ID and then just all this data. It's a bit confusing because the data that we've got inside the just also contains a list of followed users that hasn't been populated, but it does contain, you can see the user ID and then the name Mali Collier. So finally, let's quickly look at outputting these users onto the page. Again, the focus of this course isn't on CSS or the UI. So what we'll do here is we'll output them just in plain text just to see that we've got it working. And then behind the scenes, I'll add a bit of CSS to tidy it up. For now, what I'm going to do is get rid of this debug here because we know that's working. In the next video as well, we'll actually look at refactoring this because this, this is definitely too much code in one place and we can pull out some functions to help us with this. But now let's go into our view. And currently the only view function we have is this big header. So let's create another one called, uh, we'll do call this index. And what we're going to start to do here is actually represent the home page and have a view for the home page, which will be called index. But for now, we're just going to hard code it as taking the model and turning HTML type message. So I'll say index model equals, and for now, let's just say text. This is the home page. And let's go into our main.elm, find the view function. And we'll say view.header. And for now, I'm going to say view.index model. But I'm going to leave us a to do here. And we'll say change this based on the current route. Right now, we're not representing the home page as a distinct route, but we are going to. And then this is going to change based on where we are in the application. And we also need view to expose that index function. So the browser now says this is the home page. So let's actually output a list of the users that we're now following. And again, in here, we're going to need to care about if the user's logged in or not. So we can say case model .auth of. So if it's logged in with a token and a, a user, then we can do stuff. So we'll say text logged in. If it's anything else, then we'll just do absolutely nothing. So when it's logged in, let's create a div. And let's first put a heading one on the page saying logged in as I will say plus plus uh, user dot name. And this needs to be a text node like so. So I'm going to create a function called view following users. And it's going to take a user and return HTML of type message. So we'll say view following users user. And what we'll do here is we're going to do list.map. And we're going to map over the following user. And we'll pass in user.following. And I've got three L's in following there. Let's delete one of those. And we'll say case following user of. And if they are a followed user, and we know they're always going to have a user ID, but if we haven't loaded their data yet, I'm just going to return empty text. Else, if they're a followed user with a user ID, and they are just a followed user, then we can return a text a node and we'll just say followed user dot name for now. And what we need to do is wrap that all just for now in a div. Uh, and then we need to wrap list.map in brackets so Elm knows what order to call things in. And case following, I've typoed there. So let's fix that. And finally, we need to call that. So let's have this div. And then in here, we'll say view following users user. And you can see there that we now have logged in as Jack Franklin and we have the name of the person, Mally Collier, who I'm following too.